All right, well, let's get started. Welcome again, everyone, to the Barnraiser Crowdfunding for Good Food and Farming webinar. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Gina Jarmo, and I am part of the Projects and Partnerships team here at Barnraiser, along with Marie Sales, our Director of Projects and Partnerships, and Allison Waddell, our Food and Culinary Director, who are joining us today and may jump in here and there. A little bit about myself, I was raised in Northern California and was lucky enough to grow up learning about and developing a passion for good food. And that really catalyzed while I was in school at UC Berkeley and became the food manager for a 150 person cooperative house and developed profound relationships with our food producers and farmers. Most recently, I worked for the Good Food Awards, which is a partner of Barn Raiser uh, and is a nonprofit that celebrates and helps market good food artisans from around the country. And it's an honor to now be at Barn Raiser and continue to work with uh, innovators uh, and food producers like you every day. So Barnraiser itself is a crowdfunding and social community dedicated to powering the good food movement by supporting innovators changing how we farm, eat, and live. So we're interested in any and all projects moving us collectively towards a more healthy and sustainable world. We officially launched in September of 2014, so just over a year now. And since then, we've had all projects uh, from all regions of the United States and have raised over a million dollars. Uh, categories include food, farming, education, community, and media, and we'll go into those a little bit more later. But Barn Raiser serves as a community beyond crowdfunding and really holds space for trusted voices in the food movement to offer advice and, and share their stories. So there are a couple of different modes of crowdfunding, so let's get a sense of where Barnraiser fits in. Typically, a project or a venture that's raised from a large number of people is considered crowdfunding. And nowadays, that term is most associated with internet platforms, but school fundraisers, for instance, is also a really great example of crowdfunding. With the internet now, the opportunities have expanded dramatically. Everyone's on social media, on their phones, on their email, on the internet in general. So crowdfunding now allows you to really tap into communicating to people um, and really harness the energy of your crowd. Jumping to the middle, lending is when a crowd uh, that contributes to a project, uh, but the project must pay that money back. So campaigns launched on Kiva Zip, for instance, are reaching out to their communities to receive loans that they will ultimately pay back in full. Jumping to the bottom, equity funding, Slow Money and Ag Funder are great examples, and their models tap into qualified investor groups who continue or who contribute to your project in exchange for equity or partial ownership in your business or organization. Jumping to the top, gift reward model, uh, Barn Raiser, uh, other uh, gift reward model crowdfunding platforms include Indiegogo and Kickstarter. Uh, but with Barnraiser, the crowd contributes to your project as a gift or in exchange for a reward. So you don't need to pay that money back. If you raise $20,000, for instance, that money is yours. Your only obligation to backers is to fulfill the rewards offered in exchange for their contribution. And we'll talk a little bit more about rewards in just a minute. So types of projects. Our first category is farming, and that includes farmers, ranchers, really anything to do with agriculture itself, of course. Here are two of some of our favorite farmers, Elizabeth and Cody of Five Foot Farm, and they raised over $7,000 to buy a new walking tractor for their small farm in Quincy, California. Food is another huge category for us. Uh, projects include small artisanal makers, brewers, larger, more established brands. The list really goes on. Kitchen Witch Bone Broth, pictured here, raised over $19,000 to purchase new equipment to have the capacity to distribute their bone broth via direct sales, farmers markets, and to increase their capacity to support their newest account, Whole Foods. Education, school gardens, nutrition education programs, farmer training, incubator farms, universities, etc. This is Ben Icorn, a beloved garden teacher from the Edible Schoolyard in Berkeley, who launched a Grow Your Lunch campaign and raised over $13,000 to produce and distribute a free Top 10 Tips for Budding Gardeners handbook. 
community that includes urban farms and community gardens, uh, anything that's uh, bringing a community together around uh, food. Here is part of the foraged farm team from Denver, Colorado, who raised over $5,000 to buy a new truck so they could deliver excess and perfectly good food from the farmer's market to their local pantries and food banks. Media, that includes magazines, documentary films, blogs, apps, cookbooks, really anything helping to celebrate from an advocacy uh, or informational point of view. This is Falling Fruit, uh, also in Colorado, and they developed a mobile application that helps uh, people in the community track um, and find uh, free and uh, local edible plants and trees. So why Barn Raiser? Barn Raiser connects you, you know, the user, the innovator, to a wider audience of good food supporters. People visit our site because they believe in and want to support good foods. And we find that around 41 million Americans align themselves with health and sustainability. And those people are looking to rally around champions of the food movement. So we're making that connection through press, social media, our sponsors, and our general audience. And because our audience is so focused and connected, our 65% success rate is over double that of other crowdfunding platforms' food-related projects. The typical barn raiser raise is between five and $25,000, and our average campaigns raise about $12,000. And again, that's three times as much as the average food and ag-related campaigns on other platforms. So that 65% success rate directly relates to the high level of attention and support from the Barn Raiser team throughout your campaign experience. You won't be one of 50,000 on a site with an unfocused audience. It's really our job uh, to provide a platform that drives additional exposure to innovators like you re reshaping our food system. So our team is comprised of former nutrition educators, chefs, gardeners, food producers, restauranteurs. The list really goes on. You know, Barn Razor was, was founded by food people for food people. So you'll receive personal advice from a team with years of experience in the good food and farming world. We're personally invested in your success. Uh, you're also guaranteed strong homepage placement and social media support. And we act as advisors, editors, and we ultimately like to say cheerleaders. We're really on your team from when you're just thinking about a campaign to when you're launched to long after you've been funded. So there are obvious benefits to crowdfunding itself, and it can perfectly fit into the needs of your business. Uh, a few examples from past projects include Emily Robbins on the left. Uh, Goldie, she, she started Goldilocks Goodies, and she raised $2,000 for her gluten-free baking company to get her small business out of her home kitchen and into a commissary kitchen. So small amount as far as a raise, but it was just right for her growth. Swallowtail Farm in the middle is a CSA from Florida, and they raised $35,000 to build a micro creamery from a shipping container and purchase a veggie oil delivery truck. So amazing. Uh, the Green Bronx Machine, last but not least, raised over $39,000 to build a vertical garden health and wellness center in the Bronx and bring nutrition education to their urban community. So specific benefits include speed and flexibility. Crowdfunding supports many types of organizations, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, individual makers, farmers, etc. Uh, you set your funding goal. Our minimum starts at $2,000, but we really don't have a maximum, and we can help you determine ballpark numbers as far as a raise. Crowdfunding can have a turnaround of as much of a few weeks of planning before launch to a few months, uh, but really, you set the timing in a way that works best for your needs and your ability to push the campaign forward. You're building public awareness. Launching a crowdfunding campaign requires and gives you the opportunity to really clarify your ask and the platform to tell your own story and really spread that beyond your existing community. It's also a profound opportunity to pre-sell your product. Uh, and this easily applies to farms and food products, but for other things as well. Uh, we've had projects pre-sell tickets to their events. Uh, one of our past campaigns, Local Food Shift Magazine in Colorado, pre-sold subscriptions to their magazine, among other things. And that really allows you to have more capital and less worry. You pre-sell a CSA subscription, for instance, while you're raising capital to invest in your business. 
So just like a CSA, you're pre-selling and getting that money up front, and then you're divvying out the product over the coming months or year. Crowdfunding also really expands your community and opportunities. You know, you're building a customer base and your community simultaneously by tapping into your current supporters and expanding the network that will allow you to grow down the road and really creates that exposure you need to forge new partnerships uh, with distributors or, or other funders. And we see this with many of our campaigns. You know, three months down the road, for instance, someone will come through and offer a grant or a donation or come on as a new client. And because it's a public event, unlike private fundraising, it's occurring in that public sphere and really bolsters your community long after your campaign. We also often look at crowdfunding as a slice of the pie. It's often a valuable asset and accent to your overall funding needs. Really, it's something you fit into your fundraising plans for the next few years. Uh, it may be that you're going to seek investors at some point. It may be that you need entry-level dollars and you plan to come back to crowdfunding again next year. It's an incredibly helpful aspect of your overall funding needs. So with that, let's jump into the meat of our webinar today. We've had a number of successful campaigns that we'll talk about and highlight, and they all share a few keys to their crowdfunding success. So let's dive in. Key number one, tell your story. Uh, this is Nigel Walker of Eat Well Farm, and he is actually Marie Sales, our Director of Projects and Partnerships own CSA farmer. He raised over $23,000 to launch a chicken breeding facility on his farm that does not kill male chicks, which is quite common, and also eliminated the need to purchase from hatcheries in general, which ultimately makes his eggs truly local. So all of the chickens, including the roosters, live out on a large pasture. The roosters eventually used for meat and the hens for delicious eggs. And again, that's rare. And he says in his incredibly touching video, I highly recommend you check it out, that his goal is to make humane, sustainable farming the norm. So his campaign appealed to the larger farming community through a partnership established with UC Davis's agriculture department and can be used as a model for other farms. His campaign also appealed directly to his CSA members, including Marie, from a humanitarian point of view and a wider audience in general. So the story was picked up through a local radio station around the humane treatment of animals. So he was able to craft a very personal story, broaden it, and then tell an even more compelling story to a wider audience. So drawing from Nigel's campaign, make it personal and share your passion. If you visit his page, you can really hear his passion for his birds, both in his video and right on the page. So find ways to really tug at your audience's heartstrings and, and share your heart. Uh, you know, we all know that choosing a career in the good food movement is very much chosen for passion and not to get rich quick. So really explore those interesting and, and passionate parts of your story and really anything that can draw more attention to your cause, like Nigel was able to do with the humane treatment of these chicks. And share the bigger picture. You know, talk about your next steps and how your campaign can impact a wider network, just as Nigel did when he opened up the conversation around increasing the demand for a humanely raised meat. And show your face and make the ask. You know, Nigel was right there on the video. He was making phone calls, sending out updates and emails all throughout the campaign. And really, the reason why your audience is so interested in supporting your project and watching your campaign succeed is because they support you and they want to hear you or want to hear from you throughout the duration of your campaign. Another great example is Kitchen Witch Bone Broth, and we met them earlier today. And again, they raised over just over $19,000 for their bone broth company by not only telling the story of their company and their specific needs for growth, but also the incredible health benefits of the bone broth they make and sharing how they're reusing bones from meat farms and other specifics of their business that you wouldn't otherwise know from picking up the jars off the shelf. So our next key to success is finding your community. Uh, we all know that this is called crowdfunding, but that word crowd often feels big. So we've really started to refer to it as community funding, since the dollars and energy that really shine through come from your local community. So it's really essential to find your audience. Who's that? You know, this is basically everyone you know in the universe and anyone you think would be interested in funding and supporting your success. And we all need to do this anyway to see our businesses thrive. So crowdfunding is a really valuable way to launch a big marketing and promotional campaign. 
So these are folks who you know, your friends, your family, your current customers, and people you don't yet know. Friends of friends, potential new customers, and an overall general audience. And the closer they are to you, the more likely they are to take action, spread the word, and pledge to your campaign. It's important to note that on all crowdfunding websites across the board, an average of two-thirds of the funding you receive will come from your immediate community, and the other one-third might come from outside of your network, and that may very well be the extended barn raiser community or through social media. If you are hearing this and feel like you really need to increase your audience or currently have a smaller amount of customers to make a large impact, build a team. And again, this is helpful regardless of your audience size too. It's always helpful to have multiple people with you as advisors, supporters, and just overall help managing your campaign. So look for natural partnerships and establish them before the start of your campaign. So if you're selling a product, for instance, and there's a related product or business that you deal with regularly, uh, you know, you sell bread, pictured here, uh, find that olive oil company or butter company that's next to you at the farmer's market and see if they're willing to share their email list with you and support your outreach efforts during your campaign. Look at any involvement you have in your local and regional community and, and who else would benefit from that project. You know, are, are there restaurants, other local farms, farmer's market associations, really anyone interested in spreading the word? So as far as building a team for a campaign, designate specific roles to friends and, and find that core group who might be able to help you. You know, find someone to be a temporary project manager or consider hiring or finding a volunteer intern for the duration of your campaign. The Chicken Bridge Bakery team and their children, as you can see here, did a fantastic job of cultivating a network through friends. They, before the start of their campaign, had a potluck with a circle of 10 friends and invited them to join on as a circle of advisors for the campaign and got them to commit to reaching out to their extended networks once the campaign went live. So because their close friends were also in the food movement, their friends' extended network really found value in what they were doing because they had their own personal connection and values around supporting artisanal grains and local food. And then reach out. Well, how do you reach out? Well, we find that email is queen because it's way more convenient for your backers to click and pledge immediately. So if you have an email list, we find that typically around 5 to 10% of that list will actually pledge around $75. And while that might not seem like a lot, focusing your energy on, on, like we said, on finding those partnerships who may have extensive mailing lists. And keep in mind that this includes your team's personal lists as well. So your 300 people can turn into 1,000 people, which will turn into 100 backers. Facebook and other social media tools are also valuable and will definitely support your campaign. Uh, actually, one of our past funded projects, Willamette Valley Cookspace and Republic of Jam, posted to social media daily in their last week, and that helped them out quite a bit. However, the numbers as far as conversion are much lower, and you really have to use Facebook extremely regularly to really see those results and potentially pay to boost ads. So we tell our campaigns to focus most of their outreach via email. So how do you get that together? Well, today you add an email signup box on the homepage of your website that advertises your upcoming campaign. You add a sign-up sheet in your store or at the farmer's market or anywhere where you're interacting face-to-face -with, -face with your community. And then, of course, get on Facebook or Twitter and start adding friends, but think of that as an accent compared to your overall email outreach. And note that once you get your email list and your campaign has launched, you really got to keep asking and tapping into your network throughout your campaign. Uh, many of our campaigns have a great deal of credibility and a larger email list, but they found that you really have to ask people multiple times to get people to actually pull out their credit cards and make a contribution. So no, you are not bugging your audience by reaching out multiple times. They want to hear from you. The more, the better, actually. And we've never heard of an audience member complaining about that. They really just want their, or they really just need to get an email when their wallet happens to be right next to them. So reach out and, and let them know what you're up to throughout your campaign. Our special tip of the day, find 10 backers to pledge on the first day because it's way easier uh, to ask your good friends uh, to commit to con contributing uh, on the first day than it is to remind them in week two or three that they have yet to uh, contribute. 
Our next tip is setting the right goal, and that's a really important key here. We have two great examples. Uh, Lawrence Butler of Daddy's Local Market in Nebraska on the left was initially unsure about reaching his ideal goal of $15,000. So what he did was he set a smaller goal of six for his first campaign, got his feet wet and became really familiar with how to run a successful campaign and gained such incredible momentum that he turned around and added a second campaign, part two, where he was able to raise that additional $8,000. So in the end, he raised $15,000, but in two segments. And he did that because we are what is called a tilt model. So you must hit your minimum goal to get funded. So we suggest you organize your campaign by dividing it into two parts where you have that minimum and attainable goal in place, but also have a stretch goal or that ideal amount of money you need to really solidify your dream. And note that you can do that within one campaign too. So once you tilt, and you still have the time left, you can change all your language on your page to focus on your stretch goal. And we're more than happy to talk to you through that individually. Fire Tongue Farm on the right here is a great example of a campaign that set uh, that attainable tilt goal and stretch. Uh, they had a smaller, tight knit, tight, tighter knit community to raise money for their pepper farm and ideally needed $10,000, but weren't so sure about the backer turnout. So they set their tilt goal to $3,000 and their stretch goal to 10 and blew it out of the water in just over 24 hours. They raised $3,500 in one day. So they changed everything on their page to focus on reaching that stretch goal and they made it to $9,625, which I notice is just a few hundred dollars shy. But Levon also told me that a $400 check showed up in his mailbox uh, the day after their campaign ended. So I like to say that they reached their stretch goal. And that's another great example of receiving funding after your campaign is completed because it's occurring again in that public sphere. So make your goal attainable, and that's based off of your both your proposed budget and the size of your community. So really set your goal based off of how many people you think you can reach. Take that 5 to 10% of your email list, say, and go off of that to start. So for example, you have 2,000 people on your mailing list, and if 5% of those contribute, that's about 100. And people contribute generally around $75. So with that audience of 2,000 people from your mailing list, you've got an attainable goal of around $7,500. And then take that number and look at your budget and see if you can find a comfortable spot in between. So once you have that goal figured out, activate your network. You know, check in, like we said, via email predominantly, and of course, social media, but don't be afraid to pick up the phone and give your supporters a call. You know, having events, distributing flyers, putting up a big sign at the market or in your store, putting a sticker on your products, advertising your campaign, really anything that gets you promoting your campaign and adding dollars to your project is helpful. And then stretch and dream, you know, set that comfortable minimum goal and then really look at what it would mean to raise five, ten, twenty thousand $20,000 and more. Our next tip, planning, is a very important component of a successful campaign. And the more you plan before, really the more prepared you will be during the campaign and the more you'll be able to raise in the long run. And we've established really easy to use tools and a dashboard that give you a daily checklist of to-dos for each stage of your campaign so that you really feel secure and supported throughout the whole process. And learn from others, you know, check out other successful campaigns and look at their updates and rewards and videos and the language around their campaign goals to really get a sense of what funded campaigns look like. Pledge $5 to a current project on the site and feel what it's like to be a backer and that whole process so you can receive updates and see how they're communicating and what they do when they hit their campaign goal. And then your outreach really starts now. Uh, as mentioned before, an average of 20 to 30 percent of your audience might find you through Barn Razor, and really your effort is what starts that momentum. That average of 70 percent will come directly from your network and their friends, so your community really needs to hear about your campaign as quickly as possible. And you want to be thinking about emails now and thinking about ways to plan for that. Uh, people often reference examples of campaigns going viral. And these campaigns really build momentum with planning and effort. And really, a very small amount of projects actually go viral. And they do that by planning far, far in advance. A great example is Flow Hive. Many of you may know, uh, raised $12 million for a beehive on tap, essentially. 
And they were probably in planning mode for years before their campaign went live. And they probably had over 50,000 people who were ready to pledge immediately. But that said, we've, we've seen many successful campaigns launch a month into the process, and they really learn how to reach out to their extended community. And we make that process as easy as possible for you. So another key component of crowdfunding is giving great rewards. And we really believe that rewards are what draw a lot of backers in, and it gives people a tangible way to feel connected to your business. Most of you are probably already selling something, and that's a great opportunity to get your product into the hands of people. So create rewards that reflect your business or your expertise. They really should appear to a wide range of people, both local and national, but as opposed to just a contribution, look at it as promoting your business or your organization or your idea directly to a cu customer base. We like to say that there are four ways to give, uh, thanks, swag, recognition, and experience. So a thanks can be sending a card, a thank you, a call out on social media. Uh, swag is an item, a t-shirt, a food product, a video, a trinket, a subscription. Giving recognition can be a name on a site or a donor wall, naming rights or a sponsorship, and giving an experience is a restaurant meal or a farm tour or a class or consulting. And with these rewards, go small and go big. You know, you know your audience better than we do. And we always say that you know your audience's ability to give. So really make sure that you have a range of rewards, say starting from five, ten, or fifteen dollars, going all the way up to one hundred, five hundred, or a thousand or more. The rewards should be set at reasonable values, so don't expect to double the values of your goods for your campaign. And you can really get creative in that process. So you can think of bundling your rewards by adding items to a gift basket not otherwise offered on your site or adding in a ticket or a t-shirt or a trinket to make it feel particularly special. Again, rewards that sponsor something that you're already doing in your community, like garden tours or scholarships that actually underwrite your costs, can be a really powerful way to draw people into your campaign itself. Also, be sure to make sure that your rewards are easy to fulfill, like a t-shirt or a phone call. You really don't want to break the break the bank. So figure out and factor in how much money you'll make on top of delivering the rewards and factoring in shipping costs. So a few great examples for you. Uh, to the top left is Swallowtail Farm and they sold a tote bag. Uh, as you can see their big selling bush push was uh, an adorable baby, baby not included. Uh, the tote bag it itself was fulfilled or filled with treats and products from their farm. T-shirts should not be overlooked. Lomax Farm had a t-shirt made by a local producer and sold over 100 of those throughout the duration of their campaign. Again, Kitchen Witch Bone Broth, who we've now met a few times, sold a year's worth of bone broth delivered. And that was really considerable savings, but since it was pre-sales for them, it enabled them to get that money in advance in order to purchase equipment. And they sold over five of those, so that's $10,000 out of the 19 they collected, which was just over half their raise. And like we mentioned, use an experience you may already be offering. Yonville School Garden sold four $200 garden tours, an $800 contribution to their $10,000 campaign. So our last big tip, though you'll uncover more detailed ones in your dashboard and in conversations with myself and members of the project team, is to be fearless with the ask. Crowdfunding is asking people to join you, to participate in your business in a really meaningful way, and that goes beyond simply asking for money or for a donation. It's really that give and get relationship. People back your campaign because they want to support your business or organization, and they also want the reward itself. So speak up. You are really your biggest cheerleader and are the best person to tell your own story. So get the word out and ask other people to help you. And you have to be willing to be the spokesperson for your campaign. And you want to get your whole team on board. This is the Bovine Bakery team. Uh, everyone who was involved was sending out emails and encouraging their friends to participate and were a valuable part of the process. So if you have a board of directors, for instance, Get all of them together and commit them both to being backers and to reach out to their networks throughout the campaign. And be direct. 
we get this every so often, so I got to mention it, uh, predominantly with our wonderful farmers who are worried that crowdfunding is a handout and they do all of the work themselves and they don't want to ask for handouts. But again, crowdfunding is really a give and get exchange. It's those CSA subscriptions and other products as we went over. And you're promoting your business and selling your product or experiences through, through the crowdfunding campaign. If you have folks who have told you in the past that they would be willing to help your business with a cash contribution or donation, now is the time to make that call. We often hear about an Uncle Henry that says, when you get your business together, I'm happy to help you fund it, and you know he has a lot of money, and you're afraid when to ask for that. Well, now is the time to do it, and you want to be celebratory and proud of what you do. So have fun and be playful. Uh, take a look at Willamette Valley Cook Space and Republic of Jam's collaborative project, for instance, passing on a legacy and building a new one. They posted as they were nearing the end of their campaign and throughout videos and memes of Kermit the Frog screaming yay <laughs> and hilarious and informational updates around where they were in their funding goal. And they had fun with it. And you can really feel the passion they have for their business and the excitement they have around getting their audience excited about supporting them. As a backer myself, I had so much fun and was so excited whenever I got an update from them in my inbox that I even increased my donation. And we often see spikes in contributions right after a project has sent out an update or an email. So don't be afraid to speak up and be direct. Your audience wants to hear from you. And finally, don't give up. The Butcher's Guild is a great example. They sent tweets and Facebook posts to every single person who backed their project and were successfully able to raise 140% of their initial funding goal. So a quick recap of our keys to success. Tell a compelling story. Really share your heart and find those tidbits that uh, you know really speaks to your passion of your company or your organization. Find your community. Check in with your friends and family members people who will vehemently support you every step of the way and uh, find ways to tap into the partnerships that you may already have and see if they can help you spread the word uh, before and throughout your campaign. Set the right goal, set something that feels attainable for you uh, that you can reach before the end of your campaign and then stretch and dream. Give great rewards, uh, give those products and uh, you know experiences that really represent your company and uh, find exciting new ways to tap into your community and your fans. And be fearless with the ask. Uh, you know, you're not just asking for a handout or a donation. This is a business opportunity and a promotional and marketing effort uh, that you're launching uh, via the crowdfunding campaign. And you're also offering your product and, and direct sales in general. So you really got to be celebratory um, and excite people about helping you get to that next step in a really unique and new, new way. So a few campaign details before we sign off and open it up to questions. Set up planning and timing of your barn raiser campaign. Uh, we've seen people set up a campaign within a few weeks or a few months. It really depends on your organization. The page itself is really easy to set up and can be done in a couple of days without a lot of stress. The length of campaigns generally lasts from 30 days to 60, and it can be more or less. It's really dependent on your organization and your timing and how that works for your business as far as the time you're able to commit to reaching out. Our barn raiser fee structure, uh, we are a for-profit organization and we take a 5% fee for using the platform itself and our overall support. And then there's a credit card processing fee that runs between four and 5%. So you can estimate, say, if you raise $10,000, you're going to get nine straight into your checking account if you succeed. And how to get started? You know, really, by being here today, you already have, and we have everything on our website to take you through building your draft, which we'll talk about next. So to get started, uh, just prepare your project. Uh, you'll go simply go to barnraiser.us and you'll find a create button uh, at the top of your screen. And you really just start filling it out in our modal. And that'll take you straight into the draft where you can build your page. And then you start building buzz. You know, you're gathering those emails, putting together your lists, telling everyone you know about your upcoming campaign and all of the exciting plans you have in store, uh, getting your circle of advisors and teams together and generating excitement. And then lastly, getting funded. We've had a wonderful variety of successful barn raisers who we've met. A uh, few that we haven't is Carol Morrison, and she was actually the industrial poultry farmer highlighted in Food Inc., who raised $15,000 to go free range. 
we've met daddy before. Uh, Holly Green, Chef Holly Green from Joy Foodly, raised over $20,000 to bring cooking classes into schools and homes. Cloud9 Rooftop Farm in Philadelphia, last but not least, raised over $5,000 to build a fence from or to build a fence around their rooftop garden so senior citizens could safely use the space and be part of a gardening program. So with that, I would absolutely love to open it up to questions. I'm happy to stay on a little bit more, uh, but I will send a recording uh, and a slide deck with the information that we've covered today, and I'm more than happy to follow up with a quick planning call. Um, we are offering a 20% discount for all campaigns that launch before December 31st. A uh, really great way to tap into holiday gifts um, and expand your community uh, just in time for the holiday season and really tap into also that New Year's um, excitement. So I'm not hearing any questions come through. Uh, totally fine. Again, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I will be sure to uh, follow up with an email. And if you have any questions that you remember right after we sign off, uh, feel free to check in uh, and shoot me an email at gina at barnraiser.us. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your week and happy holidays.